Hey everybody, welcome to Two Comic Book Dudes. Uh, today we have a very special guest with us. Uh, Tyler Crook joined us to uh, talk about Harrow County and his career and uh, hopefully a bunch of cool other stuff. Um, I'm Aaron Clutter, Editor-in-Chief of Comic Booked. Hey everybody, Justin Badgett, Managing Editor of Comic Book. And I'm Tyler Crook. Person being interviewed yeah. by comic book. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. So at least you know your place to start in the interview. Great. Exactly. My, my spot in this organization. <laughs> That's right. Well, we definitely appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, to talk about comics and talk about your career. Uh, you know, I, I love Harrow County. I mean, it's just been such a great series. Um, I I was so mad because I knew about it ahead of time and I forgot to put it in my pull, so I missed the first issue. And then I had it to go back and buy it. It was gone the first day. <laughs> I got the first digi- it, I had to get it digitally. It was gone. Yep. But I did go back and find a second printing. So I've, I've read everything up to, to now. But then I realized I was looking at some uh, at your Tumblr feed today, and the new issue came out today or came out this week, and I didn't get it. Yeah. So I don't know what happened. Um, so yeah, kind of disappointed there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's. I, I can never do pull lists for that same reason. Like, either I'm inconsistent with going to get them or uh or the store that i'm working with is inconsistent at you know pulling my stuff yep so. well, I, I i get on them i you know it's like okay you know i didn't get this and they've actually gotten really good the, the store i go to uh, they have a whole uh, process if they don't get something from your pull and they don't pull it then they'll go back and make notes and try to figure out what happened and, and better the process so they actually right. have a workflow it's, it's good yeah but um yeah, Justin, you're just the kind of poke and hope guy too. When you go, <laughs> you hope you yeah, get. Yeah, my stuff doesn't get. really do a pull list. So, and then if you don't get there early enough, some of the independents are gone. You know, if you get there at four o'clock, they're already <laughs> gone. So, yeah, that's awful. So let's talk about you, Tyler. Uh, you want to kind of give a little background of yourself? I mean, uh, you know, I would say every everybody knows you from Harrow County right now. Um, you know, I know you, you did some work with uh, with Dark Horse before um, for some of the other series. So you want to talk about kind of how you got your start and uh, and what you've done that other people might know you from? Yeah, well, my, my very first book was a book called um, Petrograd that I did for Oni Press. And that was um, uh, like a 250-page graphic novel about the assassination of Rasputin. Oh, cool. And then... Uh, that when I was in the middle of that, I um, ran into Mike Mignola at a, at a comic convention, and I showed him some of the Petrograd pages, and he sort of took an interest and kept me on a list for people for when they needed a replacement um, to draw BPRD. He gave awesome. me a call. He was like, "Hey, come draw BPRD," and I was like, "Okay, I will." <laughs> and then, uh, so then I did I did BPRD for about two years. Um, I did another book at uh, Dark Horse called Bad Blood. That was sort of a vampire um, story. That was, I, that was that was the first painted book I did, um, and then I did some Witchfinder, some more Mignola stuff, and then uh, and now I'm on uh, uh, Harrow County. Okay, cool. That's pretty much everything I've done. It's I've only I've only been doing this for five years now. Wow, uh, which doesn't feel very long. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that gives me a list of books to go back and find now, too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Justin, you want to go ahead with the next question? I guess uh, there's. Um, where, where, I'm sorry. I was trying to read it. Is there anything <laughs> that you really want to do art for? I mean, is this is were you an artist prior to this or how did how did that come about? I guess. Um, before comics, I was doing video game stuff. Okay. Uh, I did uh, a couple years on a game called MLB The Show, um, and uh, and a game for a long, long time uh, called Game Day, like both of them sports sports video games. Um, and you know, you, it just wasn't wasn't very satisfying at the end oh, of the I day. For one thing, doing the same game every year was like. Uh, Groundhog's Day. It's like <laughs> you're just doing the exact same thing every year. Um, so I did that though for like 12 years, uh, uh-huh. doing video game stuff. So the um, so that's sort of when I when I got into um, into doing comics was when my burnout on video games was sort of at its peak. I was like, mm-hmm. I can't I can't do this anymore. 
And um, so comics were my exit strategy, which is like the world's <laughs> worst exit strategy, but it's been working out. <laughs> That's good. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. That's funny. Uh, so, so for the com- for the uh, video games, what did you do? Did you do uh, like the covers or background stuff, or what? Um... Man, I did I did all sorts of stuff. I didn't do any covers. I did like um, uh, production work. So I did a lot of three D modeling. Um, okay. I did some. Uh, you know, I started off doing uh, the very first game I worked on. Actually, was a was a roller derby game that we actually finished, but then got canceled while it was like going through test. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> video games are rough that way. And uh, uh, so that was, that one I was actually doing like interface design. And then I'd start doing um, environments for the football games, doing stadiums and stuff, doing the 3d modeling. And then I started working on the characters and I did some rigging and I worked for a while in the 3d scanning um, group at, uh, at Sony where, you know, we would scan, we'd bring in the football players and actually scan them and then work oh, those wow. assets and stuff. Um, oh. The most recent thing was uh, for MLB, I was doing, uh, I was in charge of the um, the jumbotrons in the stadiums. Oh. So some guys would make the stadiums and they'd build the jumbotron and then I would make little movies and do all the graphics and stuff that, would go oh, wow. and for each of the players and, and everything. You know? What's that? For each of you know all the player stats and everything like that. Yeah, it would, and like when there was a home run, a little like uh, movie would play with fireworks and would say home yeah. run and, oh, oh. and stuff. And it was that was an awesome job because like nobody fucking cared about what I was doing. <laughs> so nobody bothered me. I could go home at night and draw comics, and it was great. Nice. That's pretty neat. That's interesting. It's kind of it seems like an interesting transition. I mean, the the art side is there, but it just seems funny to go from doing that kind of stuff to to what you're doing now. That's interesting. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because it, like when I was doing the like video game work is very, you know, it's very technical. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of inter, you know talking to programmers and working out how assets need to be moved from place to place and and changed so that they'll all work in the game, and. Um, and I think comics can be really technical in like a in a very different way, but like that still like sort of gets that same part of my brain excited about ha- making them work because they're not like it's not like a painting where it's like it's just there. It's like there's an actual mechanic of how you go from panel to panel and page to page that has to um, that has to work like a like a machine in order for people to be able to read it. Which is fun. I like that stuff. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Okay, cool. Well, I know we we kind of talked about so we we talked about how you started. We talked about uh, kind of what you did before comics and and how you how you sort of got into comics and what you've done. Um, so I think and I, Justin, I'm I'm sorry. Probably my my question development there wasn't yeah, the best. I, I read it, I read it <laughs> so, properly later. Yeah, yeah. Well, so uh, I guess the question is: there a series or a character that you're that would be kind of your dream that you really want to do. Um. I don't, no, not really. You know, I stopped, um, I sort of fell off the superhero books, mm-hmm. you know, in the nineties. Um, <laughs> both because, you know, those guys, they got really bad and, they, yeah. and, and, but like indie stuff got really good at the same time. You know, there's a lot of really good black and white stuff that was going on. Um, so, and I, I've never really found my way back to it. In fact, like, like if I had to pick, like, a, a company character that I'd like to work on, I would say, like, um, like Swamp Thing. Oh, yeah. But it, but it would be um, Swamp Thing before Alan Moore ruined him, kind of a thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like I, I love, like, the guy, you know, trying to, like, solve the mystery of his past, walk, walking around in a swamp and having adventures. But, like... I don't care about a god, plant god. Right. right. Yeah. You know? Like that's really boring to me. So <laughs> yeah. you overpower. It's like it's like writing a Superman story. Like what do you do with him? You know? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, and and one is a structure that's like you can do a million comics about a guy walking in a swamp and having adventures, but once he becomes a god, it's like there's an arc that has to come to a conclusion, kind of with that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I really like I like the old older style of episodic storytelling, you know, like um, 
if you ever watch uh, Gunsmoke, like mm-hmm. that's an amazing example of like they because they did fifty two episodes a year for like twenty five years. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And every every episode, well, not every episode, but like most of the episodes were really good. But it never had to, yeah. be, there never had to be a larger story arc. I could, just, yeah. you just have fun, have stories. And you never saw them really rehashing like they tend to do with, uh, because I mean, you know, your your daily soap operas do the same thing, but it seems to be the same few sets of storylines just kind of yeah. repeating over and over. So somebody died, somebody came back to life, somebody's <laughs> cheating to somebody, you know. Um, but yeah, Gunsmoke was definitely a different a different breed of television series. Yeah, yeah. But I think like old the old Swamp thing kind of had that same same feel. You know, it's like that walk the earth, meet people, have adventures stories mm-hmm. that are that are cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. so I guess to answer your question, maybe Swamp Thing. I know right now what I'm doing um, with Harrow County is, um, I think that's my favorite thing I've ever worked on. Um, me and Colin Bunn are just really having a lot of fun. And it's, um, I was talking to him just yesterday about uh, how little we know about like what's gonna happen. It's like, we have ideas for where it's gonna go and and places. And we have a lot of ideas about sort of where it needs to be at the end. Mm -hmm. But, um, But it's been really fun to do a lot of like, um, you know, just every, every, uh, every issue is sort of like, we don't know exactly where it's going to end at the end, you know, until we get there. Yeah. yeah. But it's, but it's really fun. I, I like this book a lot. It's but, been cool. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right <laughs> most of the time, you know? Yeah. I think, you know, that's uh, the majority of the books I get are either like creator owned, you know, image, uh, dark horse, um, uh, I, I'd get a lot of Oni Press stuff, you know, which not that there's a lot of it out there, but I get most of the books they put out every month. Um, and, and that's really the the best stories are there. You know, I get some DC, I get some Marvel, I get, uh, you know, some of the other stuff that's like uh, the Top Cow stuff. But it's in those indie books that the, the creator owns stuff that's really the, the solid stories and the, the cool new stuff. Um, and, you know, Harrow County, I mean, the, those first five issues – and I got, you know, halfway through issue five and I'm like, oh, this is cool. It almost felt like we're coming to the end of a five issue miniseries. And then those last couple pages and I was like, holy crap, <laughs> <laughs> where is this going now? You know, um, it's just a great, the, the, especially that last page. It was kind of like, wow, um, you know, wh- what's going to happen here now with this story? I'm really excited to see where it goes. Um, so Thanks. so kind of on that, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. We had to. There's, I think every, just about everybody has to do this nowadays when you're doing a monthly book. It's like they, a lot of publishers want you to set it up so that um, if it doesn't do well, they can you can finish <laughs> out the story you know, in the first five issues. But if it does do well, you can spin that story and keep it going if you want. To. That's cool. So I think, yeah, so Harrow County had that same, has that same vibe where you kind of feel like it's going to wrap up. And then it's like, okay, now we get to tell more stuff. It's, it's selling well <laughs> enough. And I guess even before that first issue came out, it was already option for TV. Um, I don't know if it was before the first one came out. Um, I tell you what, they're sure working hard at it, though. Trying yeah, to get something going on that. That's yeah, you pretty never cool. know how it's going to go, you know, until it's until it's done. But uh, yeah. you know, it's a lot like video games. You know, they cancel stuff mm-hmm. you know, at the eleventh hour all the time. So right. know, fingers crossed. They're- yeah, well, <laughs> and, and that's trying. the thing too. I think too with being optioned for television doesn't mean it's going to be, it's never going to see the light of day. Like you yeah. said, it's, it's, yeah. it's hard to tell. There's so many things optioned and you know, I've got a stack of books over here that have all been optioned for TV. <laughs> you know, I picked up and I was like, <laughs> Oh, it's optioned for TV. I'll set it over here just in case, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah, there's so many, it's, and Harrow County is, is no exception. It's such a great story and I can see it translating to the screen so perfectly. Um, it, as long as they treat it right. You know. Yeah. Well, you know that's true for everything, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and and horror is especially, I think, challenging to do on TV. Um, yeah. You know, the, there's there's a lot of challenges there. Yeah. So now, what uh, what input, if any, you guys have in that process for the the television side of things? Um, you know, it's hard to say. But at this, we're we're so we're we're um so far from 
doing any sort of production anything but it's like mostly we've just been um sort of just uh you know like uh actually yesterday we were supposed to record this and i couldn't because um we listened to uh, i had to get on the phone with the with the screenwriter and listen to her um initial pitch okay. for what we're going to take to the studio um, oh, cool. and uh yeah, I mean, so the, and we're so in, we're so at the beginning of the process that I don't know what what my input when what input we're going to have at the end. What my, What did you think of her pitch? Was it? Oh, it was rad. Oh, great! Yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Hopefully, was, everybody else wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was, and it was it was different from the sh- from the comic, but um, but you know, it was but similar. It was this. It was the comic, but it was like you know, they made the changes that need to be made for TV kind of a thing. Right. I should probably stop talking about it. I might get in trouble for talking about it. Too much. <laughs> well, you know, and I had the same discussion with somebody earlier today because they were, they were so mad because of something though. They complaining about the whole, you know, when we're talking about the Marvel cinematic universe, complaining about the Marvel cinematic universe. And they're like, Oh, it's not like the comics and I don't like it. Well, and I said, what's the point of having a comic book series that, exactly translates to the big screen. I mean, you already know yeah. what's going to happen. Everything, if, if it was page for page, shot for shot, it wouldn't be any good. Um, you know, I think DC's done a good job with their TV shows, like uh, The Flash the other night. You know, there was a scene in The Flash where Jay Garrick, the, the Golden Age Flash, and Barry Allen come together to save this girl, and it's a perfect replication of a scene from one of the old comics where the, the two Flashes originally met. Yeah, it was the cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was cool. But you don't have to do shot for shot remake of the comic book. Keep yeah. the you know keep the story intact to a point. But tell me, you know, point A to point B should be pretty much the same. But you know, it's the the journey there that really is the is what keeps our interest. And so make that a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the storytelling needs to be different because it's a different medium. You know, you mm-hmm. have different tools. There's stuff that you can do that you couldn't do in the comic, and vice versa. So it's like you need to definitely take advantage of the tools you have, you know? Yeah. All right. So we have two more questions for you. Um, one, what's with, with Harrow County, especially, what was your biggest challenge or what did you, you know, what did you feel was one of your biggest challenges? That's a tough one. It, the, this, it's been a really challenging book. Um, like I said, I did a, a painted book before this um, called bad blood and that, um, I learned a lot of um, just sort of technique and, and process stuff um, that I, when I started on um, Harrow County was like, okay, now I'm going to take all these lessons learned and apply them. And um, it's just, it's just been a lot of work, you know, at the, I guess, I guess at the end of the day, that's, that's a big challenge <laughs> but because I'm doing all the, all the production stuff. I'm doing the, um, you know, penciling, inking, coloring, lettering, and then I turn in final pages. And um, you know, God bless the poor um, Dark Horse production team that fixed the little things that I screw up. But um, <laughs> but I'm doing. You know, I guess. And Keith Wood is a, our designer. Um, he does some work on it. But other than that, um, it's pretty much all me doing all the art. Wow. Which is you know, and and it's been coming. The book's been coming out monthly. Yeah. Yep. Which is, I'm not doing it monthly, but we're pretty close. Right, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I can see how that could be tough. I mean, if you, you've got that pace, you have to keep up. It's not like you can go, I'm going to take a break this week. <laughs> yeah, no. In fact, I got sick last week and was just like, like still at my desk. We're going slow by getting it done. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Justin, you want to ask the, the question that we ask everybody? Yeah. Yeah. What um, I always ask everybody this just because it's a good question just everybody likes to have. So what was the book that got you into comics? What was your, your gateway into the world of comics? may not have been the first one, but the one that kind of made you stick with it. I think the book that um, got me the most excited early on was uh, Alpha Flight. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I was a big. I'm still like, like man, early like '80s John Byrne stuff. Like mm-hmm. I lose my mind over that. Still, it's so good. But um, interesting. Yeah, Alpha Flight was my book. That was um, like I 
picked up probably Wait, like what? issue like um, nine or ten at the grocery store by my house. They had a spinner rack, and um, nice. <laughs> so then I had to go back and find that. Like that was the first comic where I was like, okay, I've got to go back and find the previous issues to figure out what the hell's going on. Because, you, know, you know, most of those comics in the 80s you could pick up and just read and not know what the hell's going on and still have a blast reading them. Right. Um, but Alpha Flight, yeah, I, I was super into that. Um, there was a, you know, and that was, um, I was reading that about the same time the Longshot miniseries came out. Yeah. That was giant for me. Um, yeah, I like that character too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that was... Arthur Adams was like, that was like, I, the first time I'd seen anyone do a uh, detail like that. So I was just like over the moon, like, oh my gosh, look at all those tiny hash marks. I can't tell what the hell is going on in this panel, but it looks yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. And uh, that- especially like that book, like I was going went back and looked at the printed on newsprint and it looks awful, man. It's like just way too much detail for the for the printing process. But fuck, it blew my mind like at the time, and uh, yeah, no, no, Alpha Flight's my Alpha Flight's my book from when I was a kid. Though I really, really dug that. You know, I liked the family dynamic of it. Um, I liked uh, when uh, I can't remember her whole name, Heather, who became Vindicator. Right. The name of that character changed. Though. She he was Guardian, and then he was Vindicator, and then she was Vindicator. And, like yeah. all that stuff, like I was just like, yeah, it's so awesome. She's picking up the mantle for her dead man. <laughs> yeah. for, you know, it's too funny. Awesome. Oh, that's interesting. It's not very often we hear somebody say that you know yeah. Alpha Flight was their inspiration. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's good. That's, it was a good series. I, I picked up several issues of it back then, and I, I remember. I think the the Wolverine crossover was my big one. It might have been in like the twenties, yeah. issues twenty twenty four or whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you know, about that same time, I guess I picked up. There was the um, what was that? There was that X Men reprints they were doing. Um, oh, the classic X Men. Yeah, 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 and like there was that that the Wolverine issue came out. Um, you know, somewhere around that same time when I was getting into Alpha Flight and was like, and that was like the first crossover thing I think I'd ever yeah. read too at that point. So I was just like, whoa, they're. In the X Men, they know about <laughs> Alpha Flight. That's so, funny. Yeah, that's cool. And that, yeah. that's probably one of the things I feel like we we lose is that you know interconnection between a lot of different books with some. Now, now obviously, we have publishers like Valiant who do a great job, Xenoscope who cross over you know with their different books. But um, with some of the other the, you know more independent publishers, you don't have a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Dark yeah. Horse is good with that. Um, I mean, I think they. Um, they've done a lot, like with crossing over Dynamite with like Conan and, and Red Sonia and uh, different characters. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. you, you lose a little bit of that. I think that's that's a good thing for companies to do. Yeah, well, it, it's I think it depends on on the stories. Like for the superhero stuff, it it works great. I mm-hmm. think it's really fun. But you know, like um, like a Harrow County crossover with anything would be weird. You know, yeah, right? I mean? There's no way to make it organically work or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Like they did that um, Hellboy Beasts of Burden crossover, um, and that worked okay. That was all right. It was yeah. fun, but I didn't. Yeah. That wasn't the story that I read and was like, okay, now this is Hellboy canon, or that it was Beasts of Burden canon. It just felt like yeah. hey, here's a story where they're put together and it's not going to affect anything. Yep. No, that's like the '90s when you know Wolverine was in everything and the X Men were in everything. Every book, no matter who yeah. who put it out, it seemed like they were in there. So, yeah, it's too funny. All right, well, um, I think we we've, we've kept you a little longer than we we hope to keep you, but uh, I'm, I'm really appreciate you taking the time and talking with us. Oh, that's the that's, that's the sign that we need to sign off. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, guys. It was All right. Fun. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, so, Tyler Crook joining us, uh, talking about Harrow County and uh, tons of other stuff, Alpha Flight and all kinds of good stuff. So, um, you know, anybody, you guys watching out there, um, we're comicbook.com. You can check us out on the web. Um, also, our Facebook page, Comic Booked, or our Two Comic Book Dudes uh, Facebook page. And, of course, our YouTube channel, Comic Booked. Um, so we hope you like, share, and subscribe, and uh, keep reading comics. Also, one last thing. Tyler, where can everybody find you online? 
Uh, my website is uh, mrcrook.com. Uh, on Twitter, I am at mrcrook.com. And I have a Facebook page that I don't know. I think it's mrcrook.com or Mr. Crook, <laughs> like Facebook. You can find me on there. But you can find links to all that stuff on my website, too. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching.